Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, we're going to look at Plex on the desktop because the web interface here has changed a bit, so we're going to talk about that. And we're going to talk about the new standalone applications for the Mac and Windows. Uh, those standalone clients now allow you to download video for offline viewing, uh, which might be useful if you are taking a trip and typically use your computer on those trips. So we'll be exploring all of that in just a minute. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving this content before it gets uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get to it now and see what these new changes are all about. So let's begin with the web interface, and this will look now familiar if you've booted up Plex recently on one of your TV devices. It's the same user interface, and we did a big video on how the interface has changed on TV devices, and everything in that video will be re very relevant to what you're about to see here with the web version. So definitely check that out uh, to get more information on it. Uh, so right here we're on the home screen, which kind of brings in recommendations from all of my other libraries. And then down here I have all the libraries that I've chosen to pin uh, to the side of my screen. And if I go over here to Kid Shows, you can see that we have Kid Shows here ordered by the library. So I can dig into specific uh, shows and then go into specific seasons from there for my kids, for example. And what's cool about this is that you can also have it remember your preferences. So if I prefer to get recommendations on the Kid Shows, it will give me this screen. Uh, and then if I jump out over here to Movies, you can see that I have it set by the library. Uh, so anything that you set here will be remembered the next time you go back. And it's actually, I think, a more efficient way to go through your library because sometimes you might want recommendations in a certain library. Others, you just want to see all of your content without having to dig through menus. And now you have the choice to set things the way you want. Again, we covered this in more detail in that other video, so definitely check that out where we walk through all of the nuances of this interface. Now, what you also have here at the bottom is something called More. And if you click on that, you can see all the things that are not currently pinned to the front screen. Additionally, we have access on my account here to a remote server. This is another server on the other end of the country here. And if I wanted to add uh, his movies to my home screen, I can just click on pin. And if we go back out to the home screen now, you can see uh, movies from Plex DVR here is down at the bottom. So I know not only what library I'm looking at, but what server it's on. And I can also reorder this and maybe move that one up to the top if I want. So there's a lot you can do here. Again, we've covered this in detail earlier, uh, so definitely go through that to see a bit more. But now the web interface here is largely going to mirror that, what you'll see on other TV-based devices. And I think it's a step in a good direction here because I really do like how they've made this new interface work. Now, if all you're doing is streaming media from your server, whether you're home or away, the web interface in many cases is probably going to be enough on desktop. But there might be some reasons why you might want to use the standalone application that just came out. We're going to take a look at the Windows one right now. Uh, you can get that over at the Plex homepage. You'll want to go over to Get Plex. And what you'll see here is a screen that will detect exactly what you are looking for. And in this case, we want Plex for Windows, and we're going to download that here real quick. Uh, at the time I'm recording this video, it's very early days for this new application, so some things are a little rough around the edges, and I'm going to show you some things to configure on here, especially if you have a Windows tablet device like this that's running with a high DPI display. Uh, so let me get this installed, and I'll show you some things to think about when you're using the desktop app. All right, so I've got the app loaded up, but you'll see that things are really huge here on the screen. It's almost too big, and we might want to adjust that to something that is a little bit smaller. Unfortunately, you can't do that adjustment right now inside the app, and there's an extra step that you have to do. So if your screen is looking weird like mine, what you need to do is go over here to the search at the bottom of your screen next to the Start button and type in Environment. And what you're going to see here is an option to edit environment variables for your account. And if we go in there, and again, this is only on Windows, uh, and click on New, we'll type in Plex, all capitals, underscore scale, underscore factor. And I'm going to put in 1.5 for a variable value here. 
Uh, there's a number of other values that it will support and I will put a link to a support document down below so you can get all the different variable options that are there for you. It's going to vary based on your screen and how things look to you, so you may want to experiment a little bit with this and see how things look. Uh, but I'm going to go with 1.5. I'm going to click OK here, click OK again. And now when I load up that Plex app again, uh, things will look better. So let me load this up here, and when it's done, we'll come back and see how it looks. All right, so we've got the Plex app rebooted here, and as you can see, it looks a lot better than it did before. Again, you can adjust that variable to find the right scale factor that works for you, but once you get that dialed in, every time you load the app, it will look the same as it does here. Now, both the Mac and Windows apps are mostly wrappers for the web interface, and the good news with that is that any settings that you made on the web version of Plex will show up here in the app. So we went over here to movies. You can see it defaulted to the library view. Uh, my kid shows that we just adjusted on the web interface to the recommended view is also showing up recommended here. Uh, so there is some degree of syncing between the web app and the Windows and Mac app. So that's helpful. Uh, the big reason why you might want to look at using the standalone app versus the web version is that you can, if you have a Plex Pass, download things for offline viewing. So if you click on the little icon here uh, and go over to download, I can grab this movie here and watch it when I get on a plane, for example. And that's something that uh, you can't do with the web interface. Uh, the only downside at the time I'm recording this video is that you can't tell the app where to store the video when you download it. So it might be an issue for storage constrained devices like this tablet because I can't direct it to the SD card, for example. However, in their forums, they did mention that they are going to be working on that. I'm not sure when it will uh, make its way out, but it's definitely something people are asking for, and I would hope that they uh, are able to get that to work. Uh, but that can be useful even in its current state because if you are going on a plane, you can uh, enjoy the same interface that you currently have with your mobile devices, yet you can get all of these conveniences of downloading on the computer. And that is very useful, I think, especially because it will sync up uh, where you last left off and what you looked at. So if you have smart playlists and other things that are depending upon uh, looking at what you've already watched, for example, all that information will sync up the next time your device gets online. Now, if you've been following some of the developments of this desktop application, you might have read the blog post on Plex back on August 15th, where they said that they were going to be replacing the Plex Media Player, which was a different application uh, with these two new Mac and Windows apps. Uh, they have since changed course on that uh, because a lot of people were using Plex Media Player in its TV mode with their home theater PCs. Uh, there is no TV mode on these Mac and Windows applications. It is just what you just saw here. Uh, so a lot of folks were concerned about that, obviously, uh, and they have since decided to uh, not remove it in six months like they were planning to and continuing to support it. Uh, they're also going to work on getting some of these streaming apps up to par with what some folks are doing on home theater PCs. Uh, so if you are using your computer with your television to watch Plex, uh, you probably want to stay put with the Plex Media Player app right now and not use these other applications because uh, those do not have a TV mode. But the good news is you'll be supported for a while. I'll put a link down below in the video description as to where that Plex Media Player application is uh, because it's not right now on the main website. You've got to find it somewhere else and I'll direct you in there if you want to keep that home theater version going. So that is the current state of Plex on the desktop and I will keep you up to date as things develop. I do think the web interface is fine for most folks, uh, but again, if you are looking to download media for offline viewing, then you'll probably want to download the Mac or Windows app uh, to do that if you have a Plex Pass, and the interface you'll get there is the same as the web interface, just without the web browser. And I really like the fact that the interface now is largely unified across different platforms. I think there's still a few mobile platforms that don't have this just yet, but they will soon. And as things develop, uh, definitely go over to the Plex forums and share your feedback because their development team 
monitors those forms very closely. Uh, this is why the Plex Media Player and its TV mode is not going away like they were planning to make it go away a little bit earlier because they heard from users who really want that feature to remain and they decided to keep it. So sharing your voice there is really critical. Uh, you can share it here in the comments also, but again, the team really spends a lot of time in those forums uh, listening to what customers are doing with the product and it will certainly guide their decision-making process. So that is it for now on desktop. We'll have updates as uh, developments warrant. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Mike Talbert, Brian Parker, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.